again. Okay. So we'll, I think our focus is more on the risk management at SPV. Was there any risk management team there? And you know what? Uh, there was an absence of a full-time CRO, chief risk officer for the last one year. That's very interesting, right? It's a board level yes. position, right? It's impossible yes. that a bank is surviving without uh, a CRO, right? That is, uh, that cannot be even imagined uh, in the in the European Union or in the UK. I don't know how Fed was so lenient with this bank that uh, this bank didn't have a chief risk officer without, for more than a year. Um, and then, you know, this bank was not under CCAR stress test. Uh, so it was a, it was waived for this bank because of the smaller balance sheet. And you know what happened? The CEO of this bank, um, you know, knowingly, I mean, deliberately, he made sure that the balance sheet is within the limit uh, of uh, or within the threshold so that it doesn't have to do a proper CCAR stress test. You know? I think that already gave an indication that this bank is not operating in a regulatory compliant way. And there were issues. Mm. I think, I don't know why these things were not highlighted by the media or there was nothing really about, about this, you know, even though it, it was a oh, traded company, so. it was a traded company, so. stock investors were there, you know, so investors mm. may not be directly impacted because they were not many retail in depositors. But uh, mm -hmm. people had bought shares of this, right? Correct. So yes. From that yes. point of view, many people will get impacted. Right? And you know, yes. the bank spent more than half a million, I think, in 2015, for lobbying. Okay, for lobbying mm -hmm. and for what? To not to be under stringent capital regulations. And that was very interesting. That a bank of this size, 16th biggest bank, is spending mm -hmm. money to uh, lobby in the uh, in the government White House just to not to be under stringent capital regulation, you know, so that really said something about this particular bank, there's, you know, there's something wrong. Uh, big banks, well, lobbying is very normal there in the US, uh, but for this particular reason, it's, it's questionable. You know, use the list of uh, banks who are doing the uh, CCAR. This is the 2022, the latest one, and I don't see this particular bank, this particular list. Many foreign banks are even there, like UBS and well uh, and and Deutsche Bank, but not this particular bank, which is which is quite interesting. Okay, um, you know this is a document I found on Federal Reserve's website, which says the large bank capital requirements. So these regulations, senior regulations, are applicable only to very large banks and not to mid-sized banks. But you know. It's a, it's, it's a question now, many people are questioning this, that uh, these requirements should also be uh, there for, uh, for these mid-sized banks as well, not just the uh, you know, uh, big banks, right? all the yes. stress testing scenarios, because directly or indirectly, this will have impact on the economy. Right? It's not just the big banks for which. And what is the issue and why a, a, a relatively smaller bank cannot do these things? Right. These disclosure requirements should be uh, mandated by by Fed. You know, I think there will be some level of soul searching after this event. Um, mm. Okay, let's see. And this is more of a liquidity stress testing type uh, situation, right? Where you see that uh, the bank has run out of liquidity. Okay, uh, so we like to understand a bit about liquidity stress test, for example. Like what is liquidity stress test? It's basically the test. Uh, it, it's it's a test to test the ability of banks to meet near term payment obligations, right? Whether the bank is able to pay uh, money to the depositors somehow. So that's an obligation, right? Um, and if that is not happening, then the bank is in trouble, and there is a liquidity crisis. And you have in Basel three actually there are some requirements in place. For example, the bank has to uh, always assess its liquidity coverage ratio, LCR, uh, and the uh, NSFR. LCR is liquidity coverage ratio, which is more of a short-term liquidity requirement. Uh, you know, it's a matrix that measures banks' ability to fulfill short-term liquidity requirements. And NSFR is more for long-term. Um, 
yeah and such liquidity crisis can happen in many situations right um it could happen during run off it could happen because the haircut has increased uh, that means the collateral value has gone down uh, the the closure of interbank credit market right if this bank is going out in the market to bring to borrow money from other banks i don't think banks will be willing to uh, you know pay money right to this bank because it's already in, in trouble so in situations where interbank lending uh, a credit market is is difficult that you, you could also have a scenario and payment settlement uh, for infrastructure failure you know it systems or some natural calamity so these scenarios uh, could have situations uh, where bank would end up having liquidity crisis and this is one of the situation where it's more of a run up actually that uh, it, it doesn't have cash you know this is lehman brothers we are comparing lehman brothers with this right so lehman brothers had sure, a very yeah. good liquidity position back in 2000 yeah by by a decent situation by 2008 uh, july but in two months time two to three months time it went all the down right you see the downward trend and by 2000 i think 25th of september 2008 it uh, mm-hmm. it ran out of cash and that's when there was a liquidity crisis and it was declared bank- bankrupt the us government did not come forward to save the bank i think there was a consortium of banks who wanted to buy but i think they were not in position because they were also in trouble i think jp morgan warren mm-hmm. i think other yeah. private banks wanted but i think they were all I- in trouble so they pull back i think it was also a point that it was not a you know the small bank like it was a very big bank a, yeah yeah very big bank it was very difficult for others also to actually buy because actually the problem was multifold and many people were you know uh, facing the heat yeah yeah time. yeah so a bit more about the basel matrix so liquidity coverage ratio which so is so i think you know pani uh, before we actually go to basel matrix part so one thing uh, which we should actually you know try to uh, differentiate it uh, between the lehman brothers failure and this bank failure is that you know uh, you know it used to be called a subprime lending crisis you know so maybe you just want to throw a little bit of light out there that you know yeah. it was you know the reverse kind of problem they were actually facing press, pressure from the loan side which they had you know given to the uh, i think some prime uh, customers crisis. yeah yes exactly that's the crisis. point i want but yes. they were there, it was also liquidity crisis but it was yes. a mix of liquidity and credit crisis you no know? um, yes yes they had a uh, because they were also in secondary market and right you know you mm. know trading market they were selling some mortgage backed right. securities and all so mm. you know in those scenario you have you have some positions and in some scenario you have to pay money and they were in, they didn't have the cash to pay so it was it started with credit crisis but it ended mm. up as a liquidity crisis okay yeah because eventually you will have to pay back to your customer right and exactly. at the end you will become a failure you know you will fail to pay the money so it will become yeah. a credit crisis yeah yeah aur ek baar start karte hain khatam ho gaya abhi ek minute mein khatam ho jayega theek hai Oh, okay, I think बस दो तीन ही स्लाइड हैं। हाँ, अब तो दस मिनट लगेगा, दस मिनट। हाँ, हाँ, बिल्कुल, बिल्कुल। Let's see। ठीक है। अभी मेरा, अभी मेरा ये भी काम करने लगा कैमरा। हाँ, अच्छा, ठीक है, ठीक है। Yes, so we were discussing about the Basel matrix, right? Uh, so there are some requirement, disclosure requirements there in in Basel three, okay, for the banks. Okay, uh, there are two metrics actually, uh, very famous. Uh, I think they are already in place for a couple of years already. Uh, I think from 2015 onwards, uh, these requirements are in place. One is the LCR, liquid liquidity coverage ratio. So that's one metrics used. Uh, it has to be over 100 percent. So how LCR is calculated is uh, the total net cash flow amount divided by high quality liquidity uh, liquid asset amount. Okay. so net cash flow i mean how much money uh, the bank is expecting uh, as for as part of withdrawal okay or net cash flow and uh, based uh, divided to uh, the high quality liquid uh, asset amount and uh, there are some rules as to how to uh, uh, you know sort of calculate high quality liquid asset amount okay it's like your tier 1 capital type so only the good quality assets 
accounted as uh, high liquid assets. For example, the money you have led to governments or other financial institutions. That's a you know good quality liquid asset, uh, not like to some corporates or something, right? Or corporate SMEs. So LCR is uh, calculated by dividing banks' high quality liquid assets uh, and its total net cash flow over 30 days stress period. So in the next 30 days, how much money the bank is expecting as a net cash flow um, and to that of its entire liquidity position as in high quality li liquid asset amount. And that yeah, ratio so this, is more than 100%. Uh, mm. So uh, this 30 day period, right, yeah, uh, yeah. it must be coming from some uh, historical, I think, evidences what bank might have, uh, you know, how, yeah. how they are, because we, they are predicting in future that, okay, in next 30 day, I'm expecting yeah. that this much on average cash flow I'm expecting. So that because number, in longer term, right, in longer mm -hmm. term is very difficult to predict. Correct, right? yes. For longer term, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to predict actually, right, but for a shorter mm -hmm. term, you can predict. Mm -hmm or you can predict it with a better accuracy, okay? Uh, I don't know exactly why this uh, 30 as a threshold, uh, mm -hmm. there must be some reason behind it, but I don't think you can predict your liquidity position with higher accuracy for uh, like for one year period or two year period, three year period. By the way, this is a short term matrix. This is a matrix used mm -hmm. for short term to assess uh, liquidity situation in short term. There is also another one used for the long term. Okay. It's called uh, NSFR. So it's about assessing the resilience over a longer time horizon by creating incentives for investors to fund their activities with more stable source of funding. That means this matrix is somewhat less reliable. But what is uh, important is that here the emphasis is more about, uh, you know, the bank should fund uh, using uh, good stable sources of funding. Not like some cheap money it got, and then it is giving loans to all kinds of companies, right? So there you have a checks and balance, right? On a longer term, for longer term uh, stability, right? And NSFR should also be more than hundred uh, percent. It's it's calculated as like this: uh, total available stable funding divided to total required stable funding. Um, Okay, so the point here is that okay, the banks should not use cheap capital, cheap available of capital just to give loans to anyone, right? So the source of funding should be uh, stable in, in that way. Okay, uh, but despite these requirements, uh, this particular bank actually went bankrupt. It's a question mark whether they were calculating these numbers and they, whether they were sharing this number with the Federal Reserve or not. Okay, well, many Basel rules are not followed by. Federal Reserve, they have their own. Uh, so maybe this may have been all good. Um, I don't know, but uh, I think this is also a point of research as to why this, uh, yeah, these things were not taken into account. Um, very stringently. Um, in good times, actually, banks uh, normally what they do is that they expand their balance sheet, and that's exactly happened in two thousand eight and. Leading up to 2008, the financial crisis, mm -hmm. because there was cheap money, uh, availability of cheap money, and the banks went on uh, lending to uh, subprime customers, customers who were not very credit worthy, but uh, banks were ready to fund them because they were thinking that the house prices are anyway going up and mm -hmm. collateral is available, so why not fund them? And the worst thing that happened was that that story was believed by uh, many other banks who actually bought the mortgage-backed securities at a higher pre at a premium price. The value of mm -hmm. these securities were actually much less, uh, much lower than you know that was uh, estimated by these, these banks. And when the crisis happened, these assets uh, had you know no uh, yeah no value. So there was a huge. So if you if you sell these assets, you don't get money. And right, right. And then in that that point in time, uh, you know, you, if your customers are coming to to withdraw money, right? Mm. And you sell your asset, you sell at a discount, so you don't have enough liquidity to pay your depositors, and that's a classic right. example of liquidity crisis. Uh, okay. Um, 
Okay, so we, we discussed about the BCBS rules, right? The Basel uh, mm. rules and why despite having these rules and requirements, uh, you know, the crisis, banking crisis is still happening, right? Is is this because of the political reason? Question is why there was not even a CRO in this bank, <laughs> right? It's so mm. funny as to without a chief risk officer, this bank was functioning for over a year and there was no... Uh, though no flagging by by the senior management or board or by the regulator. Uh, question mark. Uh, there are many other questions. For example, will this have bigger impact? A bigger impact beyond the startups, beyond the venture capital. Because okay, the venture capital capitals are are, are rich people. They have lots of money. They have earned money, so. Nobody cares if a high net worth individuals lose money, but that is not the end of the story, mm -hmm. right? It will really have yes. knock on effect on the general economy. Many people will do jobs, yes. startups will do jobs. So it is very unlikely that the uh, impact will be only limited to startups and VCs. Um, so I think more tech companies, more and more tech companies will suffer, and they are already suffering because of the interest rate hike, and it will only get worse for them if. Uh, yeah, many of them cannot even withdraw their own money because, yeah, the bank is in trouble, right? This bank is in trouble. Uh, question is, will more startups close? We have seen in the in the last six months, many startups and many even big tech firms have uh, laid off many people, right? So will the layoff continue because of this? Will it get aggravated? Question mark. Well, another question is, what will be the impact on India? Uh, SBP, this particular bank was actually present. Uh, I, I, I didn't know that. This is present in India. This was present in India. <laughs> uh, the bank uh, no longer exists, so we have to use past tense. Uh, so the question is, how many Indian startups are exposed to this crisis? Uh, this assessment yeah. is yet to be done. I don't think there is any, uh, any statement made by the government yet or the finance ministry or Reserve Bank of India, or SEBI, or you name it. But you will never know the accurate story about the private companies very well, but at least the public companies, you right. know the situation. Right. So I think the bottom line here is that, uh, you know, we are talking about uh, using data, using, uh, you know, all kinds of data, but also alternative data, using sophisticated algorithms, uh, using, uh, you know, very... Uh, um, academic modeling techniques, but what matters at the end of the day is that if these things are not uh, taken very seriously by the senior management, then the purpose is not going to be served. Right? It is we will not have any, we will not see the results of the hard work done by the you know, risk management team. If um, yeah, the people sitting at the top, they don't they take these things seriously. And without regulators, uh, without regulator enforcing uh, the board uh, for, the, for all of these banks to take okay. these things very strictly, uh, nothing will really happen because we have seen that happening in 2008. Many banks were in trouble because of this. I think despite having stringent rules and regulations uh, in the last 10 years, more than 10 years now, uh, with Shikar D fast in the US, but also more Basel uh, regulatory requirements in, in European Union, UK and other places. We still see this is happening, although situation is much better in my personal opinion, although uh, the actual situation will be known in few weeks or few months time, 